Dear South Africa with love, I cried for you today, as I have done many times. As the tears spilled down my cheeks, I thought of your skies and wild plains. I felt your drum beat and heard your lions roar. I heard the summer crickets pretty clicking the click click song. I thought of your warm smiles and open hearts and mothers with children they carried on their backs and our childhood companions, brothers and sisters from different mothers who we knew before they taught you to hate, before we knew what different colors we were. I thought of the African sunshine waking us up every morning and how we thought we'd be in our home forever, never imagining for one moment that we would leave of choice of our own free will. I thought about how we braved ourselves thinking we would be fine elsewhere and that Africa and its politics could go and hang for all we cared. And we moved away and boarded planes. And we set up base camp in the far flung corners of the planet, away from home. And we smiled at the Canadian Newfie jokes. And we bright our Buddha horse on Australian beaches. And we celebrated American Independence Day and we froze our ass off in the UK winters. And we were frowned upon with our raw meat-eating habits by our pasty pie friends or vegan neighbors. And we learned new slang and borrowed accents and other people's cultures to fit in, to belong. But there's a heart of an African that runs deeper. It's unspoken and cannot be verbally explained. But it's uncovered when one African finds another and breathes life into the soul no matter whether they be in China, Germany, Russia or Ireland. And as we find each other, we lose each other in the mix of our different journeys. But still we can't let go. That silent familiar echo calls below the surface. So we make batches of sticky cook sisters. And we dance to our Johnny Clegg scattlings of Africa and Manga Groove's special star to remember our humble happiness and call each other brew. But in the circle of life, the lion sleeps tonight. As we pour out the rooibos tea and we realize we too have lost our color. As our rainbow has slipped from us, we have become the world, neutral in identity. No more do we slip into Kosa, Zulu, Sindabele and Shona greetings and Yebogogos whenever we meet. And we remember we were not English not Canadian, not Australian, nor French, nor American. No, we are Africans and we are too far away from home, kicked out of Africa, far away from the lazy Limpopo, the thirsty Swellendam, the hearty Hartis, far away from the mozzies in our ears at night and the fuggle birds and the sexual fish eagles cries. Far away from the Kariba sunset and the table mountain views. No more blackjacks in our socks or blue bottle stings on our thighs. No. We're miles away from the roar of the mighty bridal falls and the vol that runs through us as blue as bluebells in our veins. As surely as we migrated with the wildebeest, as we ran with the cheetah and chanted for the springboks through the rain and African lightning thunderstorms we were drenched with life, happy with our aging young spirited parents sipping g and and whiskey on the rocks at the lost city on the stoop of the cabanas overlooking the thatched larpas with the African sunset and tribal Zulu dances. And our hearts wept and broke when we realized that that was the last of our true freedom. And we know we are not okay after all, but shh, fur and tuchan ons furt. We were trapped in mundane and we had left our souls in the land of our birth. We have no Independence Day to celebrate. We have no Labor Day to relate to or an anthem to save our gracious Queen. How I wish we had some heritage to celebrate, but that too was taken away and erased from history. Our forefathers and visionaries are all gone and our expectations have vanished in the dust of the years. Now all we can do is pray for deliverance, embrace others' cultures as our own, and hope 
Our memories last long enough for us to share them with our children and grandchildren. Those who will never know the inheritance and absolute beauty of Africa that we want to pass on to them. This will only live on in our stories and faded memories. And as we wipe away those tears and wonderful years, we give thanks for being fortunate and blessed to have experienced Africa. The summers with burnt tan skins at the beaches and safaris through the bush vault. For the elephants, matriarchal society nurtured us and taught us the values of life. I will never stop longing for peace in Africa. I pray for the starving children and the brothers and sisters with AIDS and the fathers who cannot save their families and the mothers with babies dying in their arms. And in my dreams I return every night and walk where our footprints have blown away. Although we are no longer there, you reside in our hearts, in our minds, in our identity, in our generation. For how can a heart forget? I haven't lost my way. I just follow the rhythm of an old, mislaid life map. Perhaps someday too, I will return. But this is one of the greatest burdens the human heart carries, as every South African knows.